All right, everybody, welcome back to episode 37. This is the after show for Unholy and Frost Death Knights. We were talking with Mendebar, trialing right now for Midwinter and Arv of Vodka. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. There we go. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, okay. hello. Indeed. Hello. So do we have any crazy pressing questions that came in that we want to get to? I was saving a couple out of chat. And chat, I am so sorry if I didn't get to them all. Um, I also... Missed. I know that there were some questions that I missed. I know Intrinsic had one that he wanted to ask that I missed. Um, but one of the questions that I got out of chat had to do with add-ons. Um, it was really oh, relevant. Yes. We were talking about before. Right. Um, and so Severnite asks what Rune Tracker y'all recommend, and just plain creepy asks uh, what other add-ons you generally recommend. Oh. Uh. Go ahead. Yeah. I recommend DK DK dots. It's pretty good for tracking dots, and <clears throat> I recommend like a good running power bar, mm -hmm. whatever you want that you can put it anywhere you want in your UI, so you can track your running power. Uh, any rune add-ons that you like, it doesn't have to be like DDR or like <laughs> magic runes. Like it can be anything because they're all the same. The, yeah, they just have dif different you. shapes. Yeah, whatever. Lot. Yeah, whatever you like the most, what you use. Like, yeah, just use what you like. Whatever you like. Yeah, I'm Resource personally using. Uh, so personal. Yeah, they are. I'm using compact runes right now. What are you using, Arv? Or I use something called Yuri runes. Mm -hmm. It's not very known. Uh, I've been using it since Red. Uh, it's yeah. outdated, but I, I just I still use it because I like it. It's not like. It's just like a simple runic bar. Um, when you find something that works, it just yeah. works forever. Yeah. I've been break the game. I've been using totem timers, which is an add-on that was developed in Burning Crusade, and has yeah. literally not changed since TBC for like my like cooldowns and my totem. So yeah, you find something, just stick with it. Yeah, absolutely. I know that feeling. I've gone through three holy power trackers, including building weak auras for my holy power, and then I finally found this like completely unknown add-on that no one else uses, and it's just, it's beautiful, and I love it, and I'm huh. just like, it's the best thing ever. So. It's cool being unique and having an add-on no one else knows about. Yeah, I know, right? There you go. Yeah. So are there any other specific add-ons that you would recommend to all the DKs out there? I know that we were talking quite a bit about strength of dots, um, and, yeah. and there's a yeah. lot of discussion about add-ons that could be used to track the strength of those dots. Well, yeah, DK our... dots does that. Uh, uh, right, you yeah. use DK, DK dots. dots. DK, and DK dots like, and DK diseases are the two options for that. Yeah. Just download any of those two, and you're good to go for dots. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'd suggest definitely picking up a rune add-on, like we talked about. The DK uh, dots or diseases. If you're doing unholy, you don't really need it as frost. Mm. Yeah, you don't really need it as frost, but it's still good. It retracts your dots. So I mean, yeah, it's worth having. You, you, use, you use it for to track dots and yeah. your strength. So it's a big gain for unholy to actually do that, right? Though. And uh, just general add-ons like weak auras. I like tell me when as a buff tracker. I like Omni CC because it puts a little countdown clock on all my abilities, so I don't need to you know guess how much time is left. Just get a little number on it. And then uh, I've been using VEM as a boss mod, and I'm a trader. What is to, uh, that? Yeah, no, people. I've heard, heard this wicked. before. That I've that? heard this before. That VEM is really cool. Now I will say that they have stolen a lot of the timers from DBM, so it has. Oh, I have no doubt. It, it feels has exactly Omega quite like a bit. DBM. Because we we actually make all of those timers, like we work those timers out, and I know yeah. that Big Wigs also works out their own timers. So separately, we work out timers, and VEM is just stealing timers all over the place. Yeah. But I've heard it's really cool, and a lot well, of people really like it. I'm a bad player. I stand in stuff a lot, <laughs> and having a nice lady tell me to move out of stuff just helps for some reason. I don't know. Yeah. She says like move, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should move. Yeah. Whereas DBM, I would be like staring at my battle reses, or I would be staring at my. Uh, uh, feet, or I would be staring at somewhere uh, other than the fire that I'm standing in, and it would be a lot harder to notice it, even if the bars are popping up. You move, move out of fire, and I would always played with the sound turned off with DBM, so I'm sure it had a similar function with the noise. But I don't know; it's just something about the soothing voice of a lady telling me to move out of fire that I just it's, like. 
it's so personal. And you know, I've spoken to people, people take in auditory information in very different ways. I actually hate sounds. I want everything visually. And some people I know like completely depend on sounds. Like one of the things that we always wanted in DBM was a way to customize the sounds because Big Wigs has had that forever. And it was only very recently implemented into DBM. And mm -hmm. I've heard that that's the benefit of VEM because there are, it does all of its warnings in an auditory way. Is that yeah. correct? It's yeah. basically, it feels like a copy of DBM with custom sounds. That's all yeah. it feels like, really. I used DBM for years and years and years, and Divide, uh, the guild I talked about earlier that I was in for two years, actually required everyone to switch over to the EM, and I swapped over to it um, huh. around when we were progressing on Protector, so early this tier, like last October, and I loved it, and I haven't switched back since, just because it, it made it easier for me personally. But it is a very personal thing. I don't think that between DBM, Big Wigs, or VEM, anyone is better than the other. I think it's very yeah. like what works for you is more important. It's than very what much someone else happens. is using. Yeah. yeah. What do you What do you use, Arf? I use DBM. Yeah. yeah. There DBM's you go. Pretty good. Yeah, it's it's whatever. Again, it's, it's the comfort thing. Yeah. So I mean. There's not really no difference between them. It's just whatever you've gotten used to and where you put all the bars and what sounds mm -hmm. like what. So um, I have the Coltrane voice um, on for <laughs> for me. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. Um, but I don't know what else we have here uh, on Twitter. Oh, one more, one more oh, add-on really quick that I just yeah, remembered. Yeah. If you want to go above and beyond for your guild, there's a really neat little add-on called B-Res, uh, lowercase b, capital R, lowercase e-z, and it tracks how many battle reses you have left, and it tracks um, who has a battle res, so you can call people out. Because if your uh, uh -huh. guilds have been anything like my guilds, you'll hear someone res uh, so-and-so and no one reses seven, so -so. No one reses or seven yeah. go out. Yeah, yeah, seven go out. So it's really yeah. cool to Billy be able to say, my raid leader. we've got two reses left. You should use it on the first one. You should use it on the second one. And I've uh, never been in an officer position, but I've still been calling out reses in both uh, occasionally in midwinter and a lot more often in divide just because no one else was doing it. And I yeah. just found it to be a really, really useful piece of information to know who had reses and be able to call them out. God damn it, use your battle res. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, and especially because DKs have a battle res, but it, yeah. yeah, does your battle res res that person where they died or where you are? On top of us. Yeah. Right. And so okay. I know that in my raid, my raid leader prefers the DKs not to res first because you don't always, or not to res range first because then you'll res the ranged in melee and there's probably, we're probably standing and shit, so... Hey! Oh. Much stuff. <laughs> Let's be honest. But no, I mean, it, it, you don't always want that. If no, no reses go out, our DK main tank is like, okay, I'm resing them. And then, of course, that person ends up standing on the tank, and that is not always the most ideal place yeah, to res sometimes somebody. Sometimes it's just it's really important raid. to get a quick res out. Sometimes, sometimes a couple of extra is. seconds are really important. So yeah, That's funny, because in Blood Legion, I like res everybody like in two seconds, one second. Yeah, and, exactly. yeah I, I think, was instant res. Like, nobody could compete with me. I mean, yeah, Soulstone and Druids, unless they're using their talent that makes it instant, it's a cast time, whereas we just get it out instantly. So oh, are, yours is an instant rat. It costs yeah. runic power for you guys, though. Yes, not much. It's only 30. It got it used to be 50, got nerfed down to 30 at some point. Yeah. I don't remember when. But it's uh, really nice. Uh, Raise dead. We get the, the, the cheap and instant I've, cast. Druids get the higher health one, and I Warlocks really, get the free cast. I miss the... You, you don't have the... Um, the Ray's Dad original that came in war when you could res a oh, friend as a ghoul. You remember that? That was so much fun. Oh, that was so much fun. <laughs> that was so good. I did yeah. enjoy that. That was yeah. a lot of fun to and come back could as just a ghoul. Yeah, but half the people I cast it on were either AFK by that point, oh, or they just yeah. explode corpse and say, "I'm done with this fight." Well, because now. you only get you only get like so many seconds, so you would use like all your you had like two or three abilities, and you use them yeah. all as many times as you can, and then you just blow up. Yes, yeah. it was so I thought much that was fun. Really cool. And then yeah. you get like a regular battle res, something like that, just to be, yeah. It yeah. was neat for Which like five mans and dungeons and PvP. I guess it was overpowered, so that's why it was removed. Well, I don't think it was overpowered. The ghoul did like no damage, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I think they just didn't want to keep that and another raised dead because then yeah. we would have had like three raised deads. I think they just hate fun, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? Did any oh. of you uh, know that DK had an ability back in Wrath that when we died we came back as a ghoul for forty-five yeah. seconds? It was called yeah. Shadow, Shadow of Death. Of death. Mm -hmm. It was the most fun ability ever, yep. and they took it away. It was such a useless ability, man. Are telling it like it is. Yeah. It was like raise a dead on yourself for free. And I, I love. Yeah, you did nothing. You did no damage or anything. What's the point of that? But it was awesome. It was just cool. Damn it. So it was kind of like pre spirit of redemption, but not. But you could attack. But not. Yeah. 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 
I got killed in PvP, came back as a ghoul, and killed them before I died. That so was that was why that it was has a move. that happened. And yeah. yeah, that was why it was nerfed, but that was the most fun ever. God, that person sucked then. <laughs> yeah. Oh jeez. <laughs> Wintergrass. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um we had one that came in, um Celadric came to us, the lovely hosts and DK is the final boss. Can you use your influence to remove atonement from the game? Sincerely, angry holy priest. I'm I not... don't know if a paladin and a and some DKs and a shaman are gonna have much luck with that. I know where's wait for that until Derevka's on the show in a couple of weeks when we're talking about discon holy priests. <laughs> wait wait until Derevka's here. So yeah. I thought that was funny, I had to mention that, it. That time will come. Well, I have a question for you guys. Um we gen I generally ask some of the same questions to our guests after the show, and this is one of my favorites. Yes. If you weren't playing your DK, or if you have a particularly favorite alt, what is another, what is your second favorite class? Or is there no class that can <laughs> Let's go to Arv on this one first. Yeah. Uh, I, like my, in the Blood Legion, you needed like uh, your main and your main alt. Your main it was, alt. my main, my main alt was a rogue, but... I wanted to switch to Moon King because it was better. It was a range. It had Trank. You could heal yourself. You could go bad form. It's pretty fun. I mean, right now, I'd like if I quit my DK, I play Moon King because it's better. It's like like you get a Star Search proc, you press it. I, that I like that. I like the reaction. I like when you, I like all the all that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Mend. A uh, wizard in Diablo. <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> I, I don't have any other characters at level 90. Wizard is um, the close. I do have a wizard at level 70. So I'd probably go mage if I... Um, I will actually have to do alts for midwinter for progression. And yes. I'm currently waiting on... I just let them know that they can pick whatever alts they want me to make. Whatever help fills out the roster. Because I don't have a preference one way or the other. I will learn and enjoy any class that I get uh, oh. stuck with. So I just said pick a class. I'll use a 90 boost on it. Figure out so how to play So you wouldn't it. go for another melee? I don't... I, I think I might have to. Because they like having in Midwinter the alts. Like if you're a melee, you want to have a melee alt. So they can swap yeah. out people with the same roles. Because it's right. more convenient. But I think given the choice, I might actually go for mage. Because again, wizards are really fun. And they're kind of the same thing. So not really. But they're closer than... Uh, it could be. So. Chat room almost got know, you yeah. on that one too. Turkey Burger <laughs> says, please pick mage and theorycraft for me. You're, <laughs> you're a popular guy. Hey, uh, Sios and them have a lot of good theorycrafting going on too. Come yeah. on now. Whatever mm -hmm. alt I do end up picking, I will probably be jumping or at least hopping, like stepping a couple toes in the water for the theorycrafting community <laughs> for that <laughs> class. Jumping, I mean, hopping. To be, to you gotta watch, you watch the mage it. episode with, with Vikina and Sai and they've done a whole bunch of stuff like that too. Yeah, yeah, we have we've have a mage episode in the past. Episode thirty one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That'd there it is. Be a good starting point. Yeah, it would be. What else? Let me check over here real quick. Um. <laughs> I know that one of the people that we were here we go. Tomaby asked, "What do you think about the state of the Death Knight in raiding today? Are you satisfied with it?" Ah. Sort of a general question, but I'd love to hear the answer to that from y'all. Uh. For this tier, it's pretty bad because the, they nerfed us and we're like, usually if you're decent dead knight, you're gonna be at the bottom of the DPS meters. If Are you're really you good, at the bottom? no, <laughs> obviously not. But I'm just saying for someone that's decent, I guess. Uh, if you're really good, you're gonna be at the top, but not at the top, like like tier 14 or tier 15. Uh, the main problem with Dead Knight is that there's always one tier that you play one spec and then the other tier you play the other spec. Like I don't like that. I just wanna play like I wanna I want fights that I can play both specs. I want I want to play in Holy and Frost at the same tier. I don't mm. wanna play the same well, spec you can. all fights. Like it just Yeah, but optimal. like it is exactly because the damage like there one are spec some is gonna do whom that's optimal. Yeah. One spec's gonna do less damage than the other one. And yeah, uh, I don't know. They just need to release more fights that is good for both specs. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Like, yeah. The mm. other thing is the weapons. Like, if they make dual wheel and holy, it will be so much easier to play in holy. But uh, yeah. 
for convenience factor, definitely. I actually think that DKs are in a generally good spot right now. Like, between good and bad, I'd go with good. We have mechanical weaknesses through the talent system, like we discussed earlier, and through uh, potentially a reliance on AMS and how our damage can differ from fight to fight. If we get a fight with good AMS soaking, we'll look a lot better than if we get a fight with bad one. And uh, But that's like other classes vary from fight to fight. If they get a fight with good ads, or like a Shadow Priest, if they can multi-dot everything, then they get a good fight. So I don't think that's necessarily a problem. And we don't really have that many huge clearing issues. We have a bunch of minor things. Like as Arp said, uh, being locked into one spec at the highest level, which you are basically locked into one spec if you want to play at the yeah. highest level. Yeah. If you want to play at like even the medium to high level, the semi-hardcore, then you can play whatever spec you want to play. But if you're playing at like the, the progression rating standpoint, one spec will always beat out others. And... I have trouble believing like there isn't one spec that works better than others for every other class on every particular fight. And just, it seems to me it would be more inconvenient to uh, have to swap between every single fight to go to that ideal spec than it would be to just stick with a spec the entire tier, even if it's more boring. Like, I'm actually going to try to get one holy for the rest of this tier because I'm bored with Frost, progression's over, and I want to have some fun. I want to mix it up a bit. I've been dueled Frost for eight months, and Unholy's perfectly viable. Yeah. I will still be able to hopefully pull... Uh, equivalent or even higher numbers on most fights and it'll be a change of pace which is important but not important in the progression race in the progression race you pick whatever's the strongest yeah that's what, how it works and then yeah. i don't have that weird dichotomy we're just like you can't yeah one spec we we choose like some talent differentiation now and then but like but yeah that's why i'm always really curious to hear about it from classes that have multiple dps specs because we've we've heard yeah. about how a lot of different classes not only how they work right now but what the players who are on the show want. And it's interesting that the two of you have a very different perspective on what you'd like to see out of your class. I think that um, given the choice, I'd probably be more on Arv's side where I think it would be more interesting to play different specs throughout its year. Um, but there is also that question of, is that really interesting or is it just kind of a hassle to have to carry yeah. around that? I, I did that in Dragon Soul. I was uh, Frost for... Uh, three fights and Unholy on five of them for the eight bosses in Dragon Soul. And I hated switching between the fights every year, so I'm probably a little biased in that. I mean, I did that too, but I did it with I, I did it with Tank and DPS, and I love it. I 100% I love it. So maybe it's just a difference between players, whether they like carrying around lots of gear and learning how to push different buttons, or whether you just yeah. really prefer to... I mean, ask ask Warlocks how they felt this expansion. Nah. <laughs> they, they, I'm pretty sure if you wanted a min-max of Warlock... You had to play all three specs over the course of the expansion. Mm -hmm. you, you literally had to. Like, it's just how it worked. Like, it started out with, like, Demonology and Affliction, and then all of a sudden, like, Destro came back up, and then, like, Destro got nerfed, and, like, Demonology was back again. Like, you had to do AoE, so you went Demonology again anyway, and then, like, Affliction got buffed, and then, like, ah, ah, yeah. Like, there, there are fun points, and then there's, like, a little bit excessive points. It sounds like a roller coaster. Yeah, it was, yeah. Buff Warlocks. Gosh. Well, it's Warlocks of Draenor, all right? Come on now. They're getting enough as it is, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, here's another question that I always ask all of our guests. Um, yeah. What was your favorite fight this expansion? Oh, jeez. And if it's Lei Shen, then you have to pick another one because it's <laughs> boring and everybody, says Lei, and everybody says Lei Shen. Okay. What do you think, Arf? Or, or Mend? Either one. Uh, I liked Grosh a lot after Paragons, and I liked Siegecrafter, so between those two, probably. Well, okay, you can That's say Siegecrafter. Well. Okay, yeah. Siegecrafter then. It was very um, meticulous to get it down. Like, you got all the timings down by the end. And it was really cool how different strategies emerged, and you actually had an option. Like, many fights are done with the same strategy throughout all the different uh, uh, guilds. But Siegecrafter was one example where some people did, um, they killed the uh, turrets, and other people decided to kill the bombs. And I know that we talked about a bit of this in the pre show about the strategy Blood Legion used. What was that strategy again, Arv? For Siegecrafter? Oh, well, for Siegecrafter, uh, we yeah. used uh, the strategy that we don't kill mines. Mm -hmm. We just don't do mines. We do, like, drills and fire. We dodge mm -hmm. drills and fire. That's it. Yeah. That's a strat. And, this like, when I was doing it with the mines, we killed the turrets, and we uh, gripped an AoE down the mines. And I believe, I'm not 100% sure, when Method did it, they did it on the other side of the room. Yeah. Yeah. They had this weird strat on, like, the entire opposite side of oh, the room. Oh, God. Just, yeah, watching Method's kill videos of, of bosses, especially Siegecrafter, was just like, how do they do it? Like, what? Wait, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. yeah I, no I thought it was a lot of fun how much a differentiation 
or differential there was on that fight. And Sometimes. I really enjoyed being a DK on that fight and gripping all of the different bombs to the boss and then stunning them with my engineer um, mechanical yeah, stun. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then that just was a good fight to be a DK. Yeah. I must be why you like fight. Garrosh, too. Mm. I, I would enjoy that fight if we did mines on BL, but we didn't do mines because I don't yeah. know. Dodging yeah. the mines, I felt, was challenging enough to keep me like interested, but um, not so challenging that it was impossible. Yeah, and See, that actually depends on your other melee actually dodging mines, which is not mm -hmm. a given in every yeah. build. True enough. You do for a while on other people, but <laughs> question came on the emails real quick here. Well, uh, Arv never answered that question. Oh, well, Arv never answered. Oh. The, oh, well, okay. My Arv. favorite fight is Elegon because I have the mount and. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! I hate you. <laughs> Uh, that, that's like the biggest comeback fight I ever seen in the game. Uh -huh. You just DPS the boss the whole time and you win. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh. that's my favorite fight. Like, I don't know. You have yeah. the mount? Can we kick yeah, this guy off the show? Kick it off the show. I actually can't wait. Eventually, when we're done, like, done, like, grinding Siege of Ogremar until we're blue in the face, we're going to go back through and do all the other raids, too, just for, like, refreshing, like, changing mechanics up and stuff like that. I'm actually looking forward to dealing chances at the mount. I'm going to coin the crap out of that guy. <laughs> and you coin that mount? You yes. may want to tweet. You may want to tweet those Blizzard guys and make sure those items... You are... used to be able to. Yeah. And Can you... I mean, I don't think it would... It's going to change before the expansion. That's I a funny assume. story about my mount. But... Like, I got the mount for 20k gold. Oh, you bought it off someone that wanted it. 20k, 20k. That person well, is dumb. Yeah, he gave me the mount. <laughs> what are you watching right now, Anna? I said 20k gold and he gave it to me for free. Like he, I didn't Whoa. even pay. Why? That, the, that, that was during when I was in Exodus. It was a trial. Uh, the trial was like, I gave you the mount because I want to pass my... <laughs> Anna's just baffled trial. right now. <laughs> <laughs> the, I'll give you the mount. Mind blown. Did you take him? Huh? Did, did uh, he, he pass the trial? Yeah, he did it. Because it, it. Ah. that story would have been even worse if he'd given you the mount because he wanted to pass his trial and then you guys had kicked him. <laughs> 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 that would have been horrible. Yeah, but it would have been funny. Chat and awesome. so, so chat says like a bunch of times you can't coin the mounts anymore. You can coin world world boss mounts, but not the uh, raid boss one. That is okay. what I thought was true. I thought that you could coin okay. you could coin that stuff off of the world bosses, but I was pretty yeah. sure that the ones on the loot tables inside raids couldn't. But I'm actually gonna. I know that there there are like three item guys on Twitter, and we should probably tweet them anyway and get a real answer, get a straight answer out. Yeah, of them. get them. Right. They probably respond like immediately, didn't they? Do I mean, it's like it's like a question that they probably get once a day though, so <laughs> I feel kind of bad, but. <laughs> Yeah. So I had a I question think, that came in. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think you used to be able to coin it and they fixed it. That's what someone Maybe. else in chat said. Oh, that's what it was. But anyway. It was, so it was oh. not intended, but okay. Fair enough. All right. Um, I got a question that came in from Obit on Zul'jin, which was... Uh, we talked about this kind of in the main show itself, but uh, it was when do, you use obl when do you use obliterate? I know it's not used very often, but you still see it appear in DK logs for dual wield frost. Okay. Well, do you actually use obliterate dual wield? Dual wield um, has two different uh, rotations which you can use: master oh. simple and master complicated, which is the names I came up with, and they're horrible. Which I could come <laughs> up with something as good as master plight. Okay. But I came up with master simple and master complicated. Anyway, uh, master complicated is the traditional dual wield that we've been playing the expansion, uh, which is uses obliterate to get rid of unholy runes, and master simple. Um, doesn't use Obliterate. It just uses Plague Strike instead to get rid of the Unholy Runes. And the difference is Obliterate doesn't scale with Mastery, but Howling Blast does. So the more Mastery you get, the worse Obliterate gets relative to a Howling Blast. And even though it gives you the free Rhyme procs, which is a free Howling Blast every now and then, it just, when you have a two rune ability that's literally hitting for less than a one rune ability, you want to use the one rune ability. And so mathematically it works out to about at 570, 565 item level, depending on the amount of mastery you have, uh, Obliterate just drops out of your rotation naturally and you don't use it anymore. There and you go. If you want to do more damage, just remove Obliterate of your bars. And if you have the gear for it, if you don't, you don't want to remove Obliterate. People early. ask what the eye level is. I know sometimes it's not always eye level. It has to do trinkets and such. Or maybe it's, it's a semi. mastery level. And it also interacts with the amount of attack power. It's roughly, roughly at a 14, 13,000 mastery. Although uh, there's a really simple simulation you can use to actually check your character by just changing the abilities, and it'll actually run your character with both Master Simple and Master Complicated and tell you which one is better. And uh, that's one of the things I do at Sentry Totem, and I can also, if you give me a minute, find the link to how to do that. 
Oh, okay, so there's like up. a how-to somewhere? For oh, yes, cool. there is. On yeah, how nice. to. If I can remember where I put it. Cool. Yeah, definitely give us that link and we can de- we can link it in the um, show information after we're done here. We, sure. We went over Soul Reaper for like 25 minutes during the main show, Necro Cake. So you'll have to just watch the VOD for that. I'm, we're not going to go back in that we don't have time. That was a, a bit of a, a huge discussion we had about Soul Reaper. So just check the main show for that. Uh, again, the, the show and the after show will be up online tomorrow. I'm not doing a delay on the after show anymore. I'm just going to link them both so people can just binge it if they want to on Monday. It should be fine. Mm-hmm. So. Links up in chat, too. There you go. Nice. Gotcha. Okay. Put that, put that in Skype, too, so I can put it in the show notes as sure. well, in the description box. Yeah, perfect. Um, anything else? I think we're about out of time here. Uh, let me check Twitter chat, one we more missing time. anything? Uh, and you, just to clarify one of the points in chat, Soul Reaper is still used for uh, Master Simple. If you've got the uh, under the atta- yeah under the attack power threshold, okay. so yeah. Um, we had a tweet came in again from um, uh, called Dark about how do you guys think Breath of Sindragos is gonna work? One of your level one hundred talents, your other one. I think yeah, it's gonna be really really cool to have an AOE runic dump, which we've never had before. And I think it'll interact very interestingly with uh, our rotation. And I was a lot more excited for it before AMS got nerfed into the ground for runic regen. Well, I would imagine because of that. <laughs> Jeez. Maybe. Fair enough. Okay. That would be really crazy, though, because you think you have a runic dump and you also can howling blast like twice or three times or 12. Yeah. And then you can Cindergosa twice, or I think. A, Is it 50? Um, I think I thought it was 50 runic it, power. It's 15 per second. It's oh, got okay, a one that's right. cooldown, it's 15 to activate it, and then it's 15 more per second, and it ticks everything in front of you. It's like a breath. Oh, okay. So we are we are the dragons, and PvP people will have to stand behind us or get breathed on. Wow. Yeah, I, I like the fact that you can breathe fire with yeah. that talent. So. Pretty cool. Yeah, nice. I don't like anything else about the talent. This, this is the only thing I like. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fair enough. I think that's, that should be everything. Um, again, if you guys have interesting, you know, if you think we have stuff, we might have missed it in the main show. So go back and just watch that uh, when it goes up on the VOD. But uh, I'm going to I'm going to bail out of the after show music now. If that's that. Bail okay. out. What freezing. I know. Sorry. <laughs> Leave our poor Pulling chat a... wanting more. No, it sounds like of the music. out of a plane on file no, on fire. I just something. pulled a Pat Crane there. It's OK. Hold it. Hey, frost fire breath, Archie. That's okay. But anyway, let's get around the table. Arv from Vodka. You can go follow him on the Twitters. Thank you again for being here, sir. It was awesome. Thank you for having me. I think I think you kept it real enough. I think chat room was excited. You know, um, accepted with all your answers you had on stuff. Hopefully, you get some more DKs converted to your side. <laughs> Everybody hates me because I don't know. Oh, what? That's not true. <laughs> Terrible. I'm just, I'm just lying. That's fine. Mendebar, you can go follow him and all of his stuff and theory craftings and things over at destinysoftworks.com. You have your links, of course, that go out to like EJ and stuff right there too, right? Um, no, I don't we think so. Probably should do that then. All of the stuff where I'm located on the internet is all separate from each other, so it's well, just sort should- of. I should probably connect all that. You eventually, should dump but- it all to Destiny Softworks, sir. Yeah, I'll put a link to everywhere yeah, else. Yes. That, thank you again for being done on the that show. A year ago. It was an absolute pleasure. It was wonderful meeting you all. Yep. And the co-host of Final Boss, Anna, is over on Twitter at Anna Field. You can go follow her there. Yes, indeed. Yes. I'll make sure to link to all of the things that our uh, that our guests do as well, so that you guys can see them there. And definitely go make sure that you check out um, Acres Chat, where all the DKs hang out. I hear about it all the time. Everyone's always like, "Oh yeah, this is getting discussed in Acres Chat." It's it's really cool that there's that like. Acres. Acris. Or mags will Acris. kill us all. Acris. You got you gotta hurt your throat. Acris. Sorry. Acris. Acris. <laughs> it's really I mean I see it written all the time. Like everyone's always talking about what yeah. is what is being discussed there. It's like a forum but more more real time. It's really neat that that mm. exists. So yep. you guys should go hang out there. Yes. Yes, you should. And then of course there's me. I'm over at twitch.tv bay TLM. That's where you'll find me outside of the stream. And again, just to quote it. A lot of the, until we're like raiding and stuff back on my personal channel, when um, Alpha and Beta stuff out like that, when Anna and I do stream stuff on Sundays or whatever, we'll be doing it here. But yeah, yes, you should go check out all of our social media down below, our Twitter, our YouTube, our Facebook are all down there. We're also on iTunes and Stitcher. Next week again is Prot Warriors with guests to be announced. 
So yes, follow us on, to be announced, but they on, will be awesome. Yes, follow us on TBA. Facebook and Twitter to know who's coming on. And then the week after that, the 27th, is Duck Sauce. You might have and heard of him. Exciting. You might have heard about him, but just to him by himself. But again, we'll see you guys next week. Have fun at work. Trust in the coin. Have a good reset. Maybe roll a DK or boost one. And until next week, guys, we'll see you later. And bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say bye, Arv. Bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's been real.